Growing up, I didn't know my father. He simply wasn't around. And honestly, I was okay with that. See, I just thought it was easier that way until I became a father myself. We were living in Maine at the time, and one night I was reading a bedtime story to my oldest son, Calvin, when it hit me like a ton of bricks. I couldn't tell him about his grandfather because I didn't know him myself. My father was a US Marine. He was killed in the war in Vietnam when I was two years old, not long after this photo was taken. So I didn't know him, but that was no fault of my mother's. She tried to tell me about him. We'd visit the cemetery and she'd tell me how much I acted like him or how proud he would be of me. And her intent was good, but it hurt because it just reinforced the fact that he wasn't there and that I didn't know him. So I decided it was a lot easier not to talk about it and definitely not to feel it. But that night, reading to Calvin, I'd come to a fork in the road and I had a decision to make. This is a study from a recent exhibition, a painted stick. But to me, this is much more than that. To me, this is a symbol of change, of risk, and even the unknown. Now, everyone knows change can be difficult, but I believe change can be incredibly rewarding if you're brave enough to embrace it. See, I think personal growth, new opportunities, and the chance to take your work in new and unexpected directions are the rewards for embracing change. And I've learned this from two very different sources, a fine art exhibition about my father and a somewhat nomadic lifestyle. So what have I learned? Well, when confronted with change, the easiest thing to do is just stay the course, to do nothing. But I've learned when you come to a fork in the road, you should take it. So that night back in Maine, I found myself at a fork in the road, unable to tell Calvin about his grandfather, because I realized he was the same age that I had been when my father was killed, and it was instantly clear to me that I had to do something about it. Now, I'm an all or nothing kind of guy, and I knew if I was ever gonna understand anything about my father or what had happened in Vietnam, that I had to go there. I knew I had to stand on that ground. I was also certain of the fact that I would make something because, well, that's what I do. I mean, as an artist, that's the way I make sense of things, the way I process information. And so with little more than that, I was ready to catch the next plane to Vietnam, despite the fact that I knew very little about my father. I knew even less about the war and practically nothing about the people or the culture of Vietnam. But this was important, and I was not about to let lack of knowledge get in my way. <laughs> now, now, fortunately, my wife Lisa is this, she's this voice of reason in my life. And I think she saw me heading for the cliff and thought, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> and so she stepped in and she says, I think what you're doing is important, but maybe you should take your time and do it right. Well, my response was completely uncharacteristic. I actually listened to her. <laughs> and so I spent 18 months researching the war and learning everything I could about my father. I tracked down some of the men that he served with, and I even spoke with one of his commanding officers. I also had a chance to hang out with some of his childhood buddies back in Cincinnati. And an amazing thing happened. Once I let my guard down, this project took on a life of its own. I didn't lead it, it directed me. Because as information came pouring in from all these different sources and different contacts, one after another, pieces of the puzzle just started to fall into place. Now, I still didn't have any idea of exactly where this was leading me or what in the world I was gonna do with it. I did know one thing, I'd be a fool not to follow it. And so, with the help of a group of Vietnam veterans, I was able to decipher my father's personnel records, as well as the Marine Corps field reports. And, um, I mean, these guys, they even taught me how to read the maps that were used uh, in the war. And so, in the summer of 2000, armed with all this information, I spent five weeks traveling the length of Vietnam from north to south, from Hanoi to the Mekong Delta, including a very intense 10-day period 
where based on my research, I was able to retrace much of my father's tour during the war, including a stop at a beach in the village of Kemlin, where my father and three other Marines were killed in a firefight. But shortly after returning from Vietnam, changes in Lisa's job made it clear that staying in Maine was not very likely. And this was quickly followed by a very difficult decision. See, Lisa had a new job offer, and it was a great opportunity. The downside? It was in Indiana. Or, as I like to call it, the land of corn and cows. See, I grew up in Indiana, so I knew what that was all about, and I had spent plenty of time trying to get away. Besides, we had called Maine home for nearly 10 years, and we had a great life there. But we found ourselves at a fork in the road, and as difficult as it was, we decided to take it. So by the time I landed back in Indiana, I had a rough presentation book about this Vietnam project that I was planning. And in virtually no time at all, I was offered an exhibition at a regional art museum. In fact, in fact, I was offered a solo museum show, which made moving to the land of corn and cows, well, not so bad. <laughs> Semper Fidelis, How I Met My Father, is an exhibition of ceramics, photography, and mixed media work that documents my journey. And so a project that started in Maine, took me halfway around the world to Vietnam, wound up being created and first exhibited back home again in Indiana. This project continues to inform both my personal life and my work in the studio. And, and it's really set the trajectory that I've been on as an artist ever since. Semper Fidelis Project taught me to be brave enough to venture into the unknown and to delay judgment. Skills that also come in pretty handy if you're going to be a nomad. See, over the last 25 years, Lisa's career has taken us not only to Indiana, but to the Netherlands, to Ohio, and to Georgia. And each one of those stops was a fork in the road, a decision to make, and for me, an opportunity to reinvent myself, to take my work in a different direction. So after years of dividing my time between client-driven design work and my own personal projects, the move to the Netherlands was a chance to focus solely on my fine artwork. But not all moves are easy. I mean, nobody wants to move to Cleveland, right? <laughs> and although I resisted, something positive even came from that move, the opportunity to work in public art. Two years ago, I came to Augusta, and I'm grateful to have been welcomed into a small but vibrant creative community here where I've worked to apply lessons that I've learned from previous stops in my journey. But to this point, I've painted a pretty rosy picture of things. But don't get me wrong. I am not saying all you need to do is embrace change and opportunities will fall from the sky. I mean, I wish it was that easy. But, start, but, but starting over and being the new guy is difficult. And it takes a lot of hard work. First. It's difficult to say goodbye to friends that I've made or to the places that I've called home. It also takes time to orient yourself in a new place. Even here in Augusta, it takes time to figure out how things work and where you fit in. Embracing change also comes with failure. Now, I fail in the studio all the time. And I now understand that if I'm not failing, that my work isn't progressing. So failure is part of the process. At least it appears to be part of mine. Unfortunately, that doesn't make it any easier to accept. And recently, I've come to another fork in the road. And I'm doing my best to, to practice what I preach here. Because soon, I'll be breaking down my studio and confronting failed works and missed opportunities. Because later this year, I'll be moving to Boston. So change is constant, and there's a lot of change taking place in Augusta at the moment. I mean, just look around this beautiful theater, or take a walk down Broad Street. And so before I leave, I hope you'll consider your own experiences with change. Were you open to it, or did you resist? 
Embracing change can be difficult, but to me, the risk of what I might miss by not taking the fork in the road is far greater than not changing direction. A nomadic lifestyle has taught me to be aware of the things that I carry with me, to be aware of the things that I pick up along the way, and hopefully, the things that I leave behind. The Semper Fidelis Project taught me to be brave enough to take risks and to trust my process. Together, they've taught me to be more open to change and to be more comfortable being uncomfortable. So when confronted with change, Will you embrace it, or will it be something that happens to you? My suggestion, when you come to a fork in the road, take it. Thank you.